Hey, welcome to week two of our study, The In-Between, as we go through the book of 1 Peter, uh, learning the, uh, these truths together as, as a church. Um, last week, we really heard this from Peter as he started his letter, it, is this, is that he wrote it to the elect exiles, or the chosen foreigners, that the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ live their lives as chosen by God, loved by God, elect but also as foreigners in the world in which we live, that we live both in the seen kingdoms of men and as citizens of the unseen kingdom of God. And so we pick up in 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3, where Peter says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I just want to start with this part where he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter blesses the Lord here, and he he, he blesses him as the God and Father and as and as Lord. And the the, the word Lord, as it is interpreted in Scripture, when you look at the Old Testament, is typically the interpretation of the word Yahweh, which was the name that God gave himself, which means I am, I am, um, that, that the Lord God gave when he saw spoke to Moses in the burning bush. And then in the New Testament, it's typically the Greek word kurios. And you know, it's an interesting thing that Peter is doing here as he it really is introducing as the God and Father and, and his Lordship with this word kurios, which actually had a very earthly meaning. Um, Kurios was used in the Roman Empire. It's not some specific word for God, if you would, but that there is this kurios, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so understanding this kind of speaks to this elect exile, chosen um, foreigners or strangers in this world, this citizenship, this kingdom that we have to always be mindful of. And so um, that, that's even kind of thrown in here as he does this. He blesses him. You know, this is a form of praise you find often in, in Psalms where where you bless the Lord. And, and the blessing of the Lord, we need to remember, is that we need to experience not just the blessings of the Lord from the Lord, the things he gives us, but the blessing of the Lord himself. That's really what this is about. Like the Lord himself is the greatest blessing of our life. And we bless him who is our blessing. So we go on and and then it dives into just this living hope. And this hope is holy Our hope is alive. It is a living hope that we have been born again into. This this terminology, born again, is a very rich and deep meaning that goes back to the conversation that Jesus has with Nicodemus that's recorded in the Gospel of John in chapter 3. This deep and beautiful reality that we are born again spiritually, that we were, as the book of Ephesians says, dead in our transgressions, and now we've been born again. We've been made alive again, like a real spiritual life in Christ, a life that is eternal, that that is going to be lived here and there. We have this inheritance that is spoken of, that is imperishable, that is unfading, like this great hope that we have in Christ. It is a living hope. And and the reason why we, we have a living hope is because we have a living Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, the resurrection is not simply hope because Jesus lives. It is hope because we live and we have this hope in him. It is an, an ongoing, everyday hope. And what united the Jewish believer and the Gentile believer who came from these radically different cultures, what what united them was this new display of God's great mercy in the decisive act of raising the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. This is what is common for all believers. It brings us together. When we have this inheritance and this beautiful inheritance that we are receiving now and we are going to receive forever, it is defined in this way. It is imperishable, it is undefiled, and it is unfair. 
fading. First of all, the concept for inheritance here is really more of a sanctioned and settled possession. It is not something simply you are going to receive. It is something that is rightfully yours. I believe that it is intentionally kind of referring back in the way it is said to the promised land that was a settled inheritance that was going to be passed down through the generations by tribe and clan and family to the people of God, the nation of Israel, that we have this inheritance, this salvation. And here's how it's described. It's a beautiful description. It is um, imperishable, it is undefiled, and it is unfading. Imperishable literally means that it is free from death and decay. You know, things that are natural are going to die and decay. Things like our bodies. Um, if you ever see something that doesn't decay, it's not like, like organically, like, like flesh natural. Like when you see a, a, a hamburger from a fast food joint that will not decay when left out, there's something that's no longer natural about that, okay? And so natural inheritance have, by their very de definition, a, a perishing, um, this world is going to come to an end and everything in it. But we have an inheritance that is imperishable. We have an inheritance in the Lord Jesus Christ that is undefiled. It is free from any unclean or moral impurity. I know some of you love things that are just super clean, right? Um, some of you get obsessed with just being super clean. This is something that is undefiled. There's nothing in it. There's no mixture. They're unfading that is free from the natural ravages of time, like the fading of a flower, right? Like how beautiful is a, is a new flower that just blossoms and it brings color and beauty into the world that is around it, but it has uh, a certain season. It can quickly fade. And, and this inheritance is not like that. This inheritance that we have in Jesus Christ is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, and it's kept in heaven for us. It is something that we will gain. It is something that we do now have. It is ready to be fully revealed in the last time. In verse six, it says this, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through it is, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of of your souls. This inheritance is kept for us, but we are also kept for it. It says here that it is guarded and, and, and that, that God is at, at doing a work in us and, and is doing a work for us in this inheritance. It is something that is um, kept for us, it is guarded. Nothing can rob this inheritance. But we are also kept for it. That, that by God's grace, we will receive it. Those of us who have believed, those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ, this is our sure and certain inheritance that will one day be fully revealed. It is now ours, but one day it will be fully ours. We possess it, but we do not possess it fully. We have experienced it, but we have not experienced all of it. We believe even though we have not seen. And Peter really praises the people for that. You have to remember, Peter walked with Jesus. He knew him. He saw him every day. And so this, which he talks about being unseen, had actually been seen by him. He had personally seen the resurrected Christ. He ate fish with him by the shores of the water one day as the Lord Jesus Christ kind of restored him to himself after he had denied him. He had had an experience none of these other people had had and he's kind of encouraging them, man, you believe this Jesus whom you have not seen. He's encouraging us living in the unseen. And it says this, concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring about person or time, the spirit of Christ Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you and the things that, you, that have now been announced to you 
through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which the angels longed to look, longed to look, that the angels longed to see what we see, to experience this salvation, this great grace, this great peace which God has given us, this blessing we have, this inheritance we have that we are kept for and is kept for us, that, that the prophets knew that it was coming, but they had not seen what it would be. They had not seen the fullness of it, yet we live in it every day. What a beautiful truth. But I, I, I want to kind of remind us of this, uh, talking about these trials that we now live in and the promises that we now look forward to. Um, you're going to experience trouble in this world. It's promised to us. But God uses these things in very particular ways. And you have to trust the Lord for, for you to experience these. But there's the three things that God does in trial. He strengthens us. It, it speaks of this, um, about very trials that the tested the genuineness of your faith. He purifies our faith like gold. When you go through trial and trouble and you cling to the Lord, it purifies like the fire would purify gold. And the last thing is that Christ receives glory and praise through our trials and troubles. And that is a glory that we will one day share in. And this eternal inheritance and this great salvation we have that is kept for us and we're kept for it. Man, the, the prophets who've been so faithful longed to know it, yet spoke of it. The angels long to look into it, and yet it is ours and we have it, this experience. But it is in the Lord Jesus Christ whom, whom he spoke to, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to know Jesus Christ as Lord to experience this inheritance. Yet experiencing this inheritance does not mean we will not have trial and trouble now. Actually, he's promised us that we will. And so today, as you study together the word of God, as you discuss these truths together, here's a few things I hope you do today as a group, because I think it's gonna help you grow in your authenticity with one another. It's gonna help you keep it real with one another. Is I'd love for you to share a little bit about some trials and troubles that have made your faith more genuine, strengthened you. How have you experienced that? And I also hope right now you'd be willing to share with one another some trials and troubles that you're facing right now. You'd pray for one another deeply, that you'd stop and just spend some time praying over one another. So thank you for joining me today as we just continue learning together about the in-between through the great epistle of 1 Peter, the letter written to us who are now living as the chosen foreigners in this land.